I'm Veronique Mottier and I'm a sociologist um, at Jesus College uh, Cambridge and also a professor in sociology at the University of Lausanne. And I'm going to talk to you today about a conference um, uh, which we're organizing on 4 and 5 July of this year, 2013, uh, together with my uh, colleague Robbie Dushinsky, uh, who is a lecturer in sociology and social work at the University of Northumbria. And um, the, the idea of the conference grew out of a shared research interest that we both have um, on, in sexual classifications. Uh, sexual classifications are that whole set of discourses, legal discourses, religious discourses, um, psychiatric discourses, medical discourses and so on, um, which categorize certain types of sexual behaviors as either normal or abnormal. And to just take one example of that, uh, if we take the example of homosexuality, same-sex behavior, same-sex interactions in the UK, then we know that in past times in history, uh, same-sex interactions were variously uh, considered to be uh, either a form of uh, immoral behavior, a form of sin, uh, or a, f a form of a disease, a mental disorder, for example, mental illness, uh, or the result of a hormonal imbalance or an imbalance in the brain or whatever uh, biological reasons were put forward to explain it. Uh, and the same-sex behaviors were also seen as um, a form of criminal behavior. And very often all of these different discourses were happening were, were at work at the same time. It's only in very recent decades uh, that we've witnessed the process of declassification of homosexuality, uh, which is now seen as you know, one behavior amongst others. Um, and yet the legal consequences, the, the social consequences of these past uh, understandings are, are still at work today. So we're still working through the sort of impact of these, these past historical discourses on uh, same-sex behaviors. In May uh, of this year, so in May 2013, there will be the publication of the new DSM-5. The DSM, the, statistics, uh, the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual, uh, is uh, used today very widely by uh, mental health practitioners um, um, in, in the entire world, not just in the UK or the US, but in, also in many other countries as a basis for their uh, diagnostic practices with patients. So they use this as a basis for uh, diagnosing certain people's sexual behaviors, sexual preferences, sexual practices uh, in terms of um, normalcy of, or, or abnormalcy, uh, with all sorts of consequences for funding, for treatment, uh, and so on. Uh, therefore, the publication of the DSM-5 is a major event because there hasn't been a, a revision of the DSM uh, for uh, 19 years. Um, and the whole process of revision of the DSM, uh, which has led to this uh, upcoming publication in May, has itself already been the subject of many, many controversies in the media and elsewhere. Um, so at our conference we want to, just a few weeks after the publication of the final version of the DSM-5 in May, we want to bring a, a whole set of scholars together to critically explore uh, both the classifications that are being produced by this new DSM-5, by this new revised version uh, of the DSM, uh, and we also want to uh, try to ask some wider theoretical questions. Uh, more precisely, and I think that's one of the uh, originalities of our conference, we want to bring together both some of the scholars uh, such as Ken Sucker or Cynthia Graham, who have been very heavily involved in the working groups that have produced the material for writing the DSM, uh, and other scholars which um, develop in many different ways and in many different disciplines uh, critical analysis of sexology and of psychiatry. So with major figureheads of these, uh, of these kind of approaches, uh, such as uh, Eric Fassin, Alain Giammi, uh, Jeffrey Weeks, uh, Liza Downing, uh, and, and many others. So with our conference, we're hoping to pursue two aims. Uh, firstly, uh, we would like to explore uh, the revised categories of sexual normality and abnormality that the DSM-5 is producing uh, with speakers such as Patrick Singhi, uh, Alain Jami and uh, Liza Downing. Uh, and secondly, we want to also 
open up the debate towards wider critical questions about uh, social change around sexuality more generally. Uh, with talks about, for example, um, the, role, the way in which um, uh, ideas about uh, normal sexuality and abnormal sexuality are used today, are mobilized today in uh, controversies around immigration in France, for example, today, with a talk by Eric Fassin from Paris. Or the way in which um, wider processes of gender assignment are operating in society today, for example, more precisely the way in which babies at birth are being uh, classified as either fi female or male, especially in those cases where this is uh, biologically not always very obvious, right? So we are very interested in also having speakers who will uh, talk about that more generally because the DSM will also have something to say about that and will sort of bring together the more specific contribution of the DSM to this question with wider critical analysis of the way in which these practices have been evolving over the past, uh, over the past few decades. Uh, the conference will close with uh, a talk by Jeffrey Weeks, who is one of the founding persons of critical analysis of sexology in the UK, uh, who will give a very exciting talk um, where he will explore the possibility to go beyond classification. So he will basically ask, can we do without classifying at all? Uh, could we imagine a society in which we live, uh, in, in which there would be no sexual uh, labels at all? And if so, what would it look like? So as you can see, this will be a very exciting event which will bring, bring together extremely interesting speakers from a very different range of disciplines and perspectives. Uh, and we hope that the public will also reflect this. So we invite um, uh, people to sign up for this from all sorts of different backgrounds, from activist backgrounds to uh, practitioners, perhaps NHS practitioners, uh, to uh, just wider public who might have an interest in, in these kind of questions. Uh, and I also refer you to our website for a fuller program of our speakers. I've only been able to mention a few of them, but as you will see from the program, we have an, a very interesting program um, with a very wide range of topics put together.